Alright, what's up yens guys? I just finished making a video to replace the video where I think I'll leave it up because so you see the video I was replacing. Very windy, you couldn't hardly decipher any of it. I just finished doing the video about serial church burnings and crap like that. And there's some other stuff I said in that video I decided I'm going to go say in a separate video. And my take on Jesus Christ and all that. I put it in that video, but I think the whole video got ruined and it was like a 30 minute video. I'll make a separate and all that stuff too. Where um, how, I, how I believe differently, how I believe in Jesus Christ. Yet um, I believe in charity and I get involved in charity in the holidays and I have friends both black and white that try to get involved. And um, I'm somewhat a, uh, somewhat a separatist. And um, my take on, uh, I don't know, so many people that are around you, uh, you only, they only see uh, Jesus Christ as some tyrant just that, uh, to rebel against because, hey, if you had any parent like mine that are very well versed in the Bible, in the Bible but yet your parents fight and you get very well, they have an ashtray next to the Bible and you believe the way they do or else they scream, swear, and chain smoke. I mean... To, I mean, as I said in the video before, you have to have a healthy amount of uh, cynicism on one side. You want to say, where is God? And hey, where the hell is the Satan too? Oh, you're going to go worship Satan or get involved in Alistair Crowley crap and worship something with a goat's head. And meanwhile, you're still in mommy and daddy's house behind a computer talking about how great Alistair Crowley is and how great uh, whatever is. And oh, this is something you want to worship. To rebel against the mommy and daddy that screams, swears, and chain smokes, but goes to church. And, uh, oh, you're still, you didn't advance yourself in any kind of a way physically or any kind of. But here's my take on it and how I believe that you can actually uh, sustain, support Jesus Christ without being some kind of religious fanatic or say you don't care for the television religions that have fancy airplanes. They're getting all this I mean, yeah, what. One thing it gets me too is you know local charity charities that you get involved in too they're barely making it or maybe you have some other churches out there that are nicer people they barely making it you got these other people they're making these have these fancy cars and everything and jet planes and they're on TV now they uh, they want you to um, make them the beneficiary of your will and if you have oil and gas lease stocks they will, oh they'll take that too and then they'll have, have repetitive ad, ads on there the religious station you know of uh, orphans promise which yes i feel bad for all these orphans out there but uh you, then you almost want to have them investigated for uh how much of it's going to orphans but and how much is it going to their lifestyle so they can have a fancy car and I have this thing about, I want to say in a separate video, uh, separately that I was telling the girlfriend, I said, hey, you decide to get up maybe an oil rich, rich Arab that it's so ridiculously rich or somebody else that's so ridiculously rich and they decide they want to just feed every single orphan, feed the poor, house them. I think uh, if you had one that wanted to do that, I think in 20 years you'd be down to just poverty again because the population just explodes and these other countries, you know, some people are breeding victims, not that they're intending to, whether rapes or in other countries, the woman ain't allowed to say no. And there's so much guff in other countries that uh, is going on and all that stuff, too. Uh, I mean, uh, somehow, if you believe in the end of days, you know, something else, the forces of nature is going to actually yeah, kill a whole lot of us, you know. And when you say, whenever you want to say that, you want to say yourself included, you know, what if there was a natural disaster plague or whatever you know i mean include yourself you know so to be fair but um but anyway i, I don't want to go into all of that but i wanted to say my take what i don't subscribe to and what i'm trying to get into here is before i'm getting off the subject here what i uh my take on uh on belief in jesus christ is simple yeah yes you can believe in jesus christ and m my uh, position on him is actually way different than um Definitely not anti-Semitic, but I basically am kind of like a separatist that um, I totally, you know, I couldn't go to any other kind of like certain people in tele television religion. It annoys the living crap out of me that 
they're glorifying uh, Abraham, even though it didn't happen. To, it didn't actually sacrifice his own son, but you can't hear a disembodied voice nowadays, and you're about to kill your kid because a disembodied voice tells you to. You do that in this day and age, you ought to better seek professional help. Uh, and I don't care for, uh, well, there's that stuff that nobody does anymore, but people were claiming to support Jesus Christ and, and uh, in the name of, coming in the name of Jesus Christ on television, and they're glorifying the, what I call it, the um, uh, prehistoric sacrificial dogma, sprinkling blood of an animal in the mercy seat and uh, these uh, sacrifices and, and all that. And, my take on that before I get to it, believe in Jesus Christ, why Jesus Christ has to come. It was all, it was all cult, occultic, a bunch of voodoo going on. I believe from the fall that we had a fall, right? And because of that, you know, uh, if you see other people, your, your family, pets, dogs or cats or even animals in a zoo, they almost want to talk back to you. Sometimes they smile at you, but yet you've got a dog, that, a dog or cat for no reason. It'll ha ah, and attack you. How come you had monkeys in, uh, monkeys or dogs or cats in? Um, I talked about a video before. Very friendly on the TV. They're stars. Everyone from Clyde from the uh, played with Clint Eastwood, right? Turn Clyde. Monkeys like a chimpanzee. Like I remember an old eighties eighties television show called BJ and the Bear. A guy with a trucker and the sheriff was always after him. I mean, TV shows with uh, monkeys and different things, but. They are nice, and then how? why did you get the ones that, they, oh, they did that woman, ripped her face off, she's totally blind. And um, what I'm saying is because of fall, I mean, that there's going to eventually going to be a restoration to everything that's um, back to the way it was. You could tell that I even read the book of Enoch, there's plenty of evidence in there. And I believe because of the fall, the predatory nature just started to happen like that, you know what I mean? Yeah, we eat meat, we have to, but yet, you know, if you want to be a vegan and just, hey, you're preparing yourself for maybe the time that, you know, none of that would be needed, I don't know, but that's a lot of other stuff to say in another video, but the fall caused, well, animals to attack and eat other animals. Humans could also get eaten. The predatory nature got introduced in even other humans, and then I entered, in a, I'm talking in parentheses here, but if you want to, uh, get an idea what I mean, check out the YouTube video called The Story of Your Enslavement. There's two versions of that video. It says that, you know, how humans and animals, they're why they become hardwired to dominate the resources and dominate other creatures of their own kind and others to dominate the resources and get them before they get you. It's that element actually kind of came into being, uh, Oh, yeah, and what my take on Jesus Christ was, was I have reserved the right to uh, kind of like snub any kind of things like that, sprinkling blood on a mercy seat and sacrifices, glorifying that. I call it uh, prehistoric sacrificial dog. Prehistoric sacrificial dogma. The reason why I do that and why I hate it and nothing can make me subscribe to it and yet how I sustain Jesus Christ is Unlike other people sustain Jesus Christ, my way is similar to yours. I don't complain. I don't. Um, I complain about uh, the hypocrisy, but I don't um, force uh, it down anybody's throat. But my idea here, okay, you had a fall, right? And the predatory nature came. I believe this this prehistoric sacrificial dogma that people preachers on TV still glorify it, like the Old Testament. It was it beca every creature become corrupt and that become corrupt. No sooner it was conceived, the idea of the sacrificial thing. Part of it, I believe, is because people had to eat. Every creature had to eat. The predatory nature. You and me could, could get eaten by a lion, an alligator, and all these animals. Uh, in some weird way, it was uh, everything. Inga had a predator and created a check in the numbers. And humans right now, we we don't really, the population of humans is so big. We have predators, we get shot by other people, but except if you're in the jungles, you're in Africa or South America, or maybe even the Everglades, deep Everglades in Florida or some places, 
This in the country of the old USA, you can get eaten by a coyote. I don't know. Damn near eradicated. Humans don't hardly have any. Sirens out there making noise. Anyway, humans don't have any, hardly any other predators besides each other. But anyway, my idea on uh, here, what I'm getting at is I believe uh, that whole thing, the minute it was sacrificial thing, uh, hate it. I don't, you can, you believe in Jesus Christ. I sustain Jesus Christ a different way. Uh, did uh, believe that uh, it was, uh, the minute it was, came into being, it was hijacked. And um, what happened is blood became currency, you know what I mean? It, it it uh, the devil become a lone shark, and uh, Jesus become the person who wanted to do a buyback, you know, and give himself over, because that was it was already known from the beginning that that was going to get out of hand, and uh, the minute that was conceived, people, um, oh geez, even in the uh, gospels, people were literally. It was a big industry to sacrifice these animals. They were sold to be sacrificed. It was a animal sacrifice industry. And uh, Jesus was gonna sh was basically shutting that down. And you imagine back in them days, people were taking their animals, how in the Bible they, uh, they can uh, disqualify an animal, find a flaw in it. Oh, yeah, you got to, and disqualify, you got to buy one of ours. And you know, and by, at the same time, they conveniently say, oh, yeah, we'll, we'll take that animal off your hands while you have it here. Then they get the next guy, I'll disqualify this one, we'll take this off of your hands. And you bet they, the next guy that they disqualified that sacrifice, they probably sold them the uh, animal they took from the other guy. You know, it doesn't say in the Bible that they conveniently want to take it off their hands, but I suspect that they did, you know. Then, you know, all the... Christians that got uh, persecuted outside of that and other cultures outside of there, they all had an animal sacrifice industry for their own uh, gods. So uh, Christians were persecuted that way. It literally, uh, you, all, you had inquisitions later on that got crazy. But that's another story. But uh, you had these uh, Christians basically got persecuted because everywhere they went, they were... Uh, a threat to that uh, industry besides the besides well now we don't got that anymore we got the meat packing industry you know they bring them in you know uh, kill them you know to have your cows and beef or cows or lamb or whatever any kind of meat chickens just meat sauce bzz, bzz, and send it to your store but back then they had their meat packing industry you were either a farmer or you owned uh, cattle you know and they were sold but Imagine you made just as much or more money on top of that selling that. So, but anyway, there's more, my uh, thing for you. One more thought for you. Um, the devil was a loan shark. It was a big debt. Blood became currency. So something wanted a massive debt in blood. So you get uh, it become like a big, uh, pretty much a codic. I have a, a book that I actually read. Eliphaz Levi, the Occult Agreement of the Two Testaments, which literally, it actually outlines Ezekiel and talks about the book of Revelation. You know, all he is, why they call it Occult Agreement of the Two Testaments, you know what I mean? Uh, you could almost call it the Satanic Verses. Or that. Like I said, I'm, I don't, I'm not anti-Semitic, you know, I like some Jewish stuff, but I says, sorry, I don't care for any of that. Nobody does that anymore. Nobody should actually be preaching or glorifying that anymore. The devil was, okay, the devil was the lone shark, and Jesus kind of paid that off. He gave himself over, right? And um, if you will uh, consider, uh, you guys ever see those documentaries about Dillinger? Yeah, the uh, that old gangster Dillinger. Uh, when he, it was almost like um, the devil was like Dillinger, blood debt. And, you know, give your, you're given, you don't pay a debt, you know make deceive you like you're making payments on a debt with them sacrifice but you're not really not they're going further into debt and dylan i bring up dillinger's because people didn't pay a juice loan for their gambling or whatever he loaned money uh, and then the interest was so ridiculous and if you know the when you deal with loan sharks like uh like dillinger was in a 
documentary. He, that guy was crazy. Uh, you never would pay him off. You know, you were under pressure to keep giving him money, but that interest was pow, 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 pow. And if you didn't make a payment, he, he took you down somewhere and uh, tortured him for days. Yeah, people didn't pay his juice loans. He tortured him for days. So uh, there you go. You know, uh, well, my take on it is like the devil would be like the loan shark. And it was like the whole sacrificial thing was ruined the very minute it was consumed. It was, the very minute it was conceived, you know. Totally. Uh, and then, you know, it had to be stopped a buyback. So uh, Christ gives himself over and that blood was a massive like payoff, so to speak. Uh, otherwise, the Jesus, I'm, I'm making the analogy right there. Uh, so, uh, well, I'm, I'm uh, stressing it's uh, that was destined to be ruined, and people were still glorifying that, you know. I mean, uh, that holy of holies, sprinkling blood of an animal on a mercy seat that was ridiculous the minute it was the minute it was introduced, and it. It brought forth the animal sacrifice industry where it may have made more money than the farming and the meatpacking industry, you know what I mean? And then somewhere along the line, you know, after, after the flood, you had people spreading around all kind of places, however they got in these other continents. and may have even led to those Aztec rituals where they were killing and ripping people's hearts out in the name of some god, you know. That you can argue that what if there was a shapeshifter out there Enoch, you know, the Nephilim, and there's these dark spirits. Then if you, I read the t uh, Testament of Solomon, how Solomon uh, interrogated these different demons and their functions, which if you think that ain't inspired, oh, King James Version, you, you, that's not inspired, you should read that. There were some very good points where Solomon interrogated these demons and saying what their function was, you know what I mean? So you can, Miles, you can almost speculate in how the descendants of some of these people that, you know, branched out, you know, they may have been whatever, might have eventually become like Aztecs and they were like uh, doing these crazy ass rituals where they were, you know, ripping people's hearts out and everything else, you know, too. Um, and then like, yeah, they, the uh, documentaries you can get on DVD, like History Channel documentaries where the barbarians that converted to Christianity, they became... There's one, these ones called the Franks, and there's other people, you know, there was Merovich and Clovis. And saying it from memory uh, that some of these, uh, they converted to Christianity. They were Roman mercenaries, you know, they killed off these other barbarians that were spilling blood on the ground of animals. They didn't think it would give victory to their gods, so they were kind of eradicated, you know. And uh, all these other... Uh, yeah, there was so much in Barbarians. There was a story about how Christianity, one of those, I forget which one, you know, there was Clovis Merovich and there was all these other ones. The one, I guess he had a woman that was a wife against her will, you know, taken somehow. I'm saying this from memory. She had, a, she offered him going on a way to battle, a cross. You know, he wasn't a Christian, you know, and all that and still trying to convert him. And I guess he was losing, you know, he was on the verge of death losing or whatever, I think even wounded. And he said, uh, he said some prayer. It says, if uh, you spare my life and help me win this battle, I will worship you and somehow won the battle. So there you go. Uh, that history, the history channel barbarians. But of course it was not going to be perfect. The steps later on wasn't going to be perfect towards that either. You had these inquisitions. And uh, the shit that went on, like the beginning of one of the movies with Kate Blanche and Elizabeth. You ever see that movie, Elizabeth? I think it was the first Elizabeth movie, not the Golden Age. Showing where they were dragging these people away, shaving their heads and burning them at the stake. You know, you had inquisitions like that. And later, people started getting an age of enlightenment and all that stuff. And you had, uh, of course, you know, people started getting more civilized, you know, gotten out of the Dark Ages. You started uh, having people, you know, with big churches, you know. Bach, Vivaldi, and Handel, and then Vivaldi's time, Vivaldi was a pre priest, you know, there was this DVD you can get in pieces of this on YouTube, the uh, video on YouTube, Vivaldi's women, how uh, all these women that uh, were actually really ugly women, they had great voices, but they were ugly, everybody coming to hear their voices, but 
because of all the fornication, all the stuff going on, they were deformed because I guess you get these venereal diseases that made the babies. Locadius or something deformed. But yet the place was formed called La Pieta. It was, but in English it meant the mercy. This, uh, I know I forget if it was a friar or a fr good friar, some kind of monk or something. Uh, seeing babies being thrown in the streets, but uh, you ever hear the rock and roll song Robin Troll or Bridge of Size? That bridge. Of, well, anyway, that bridge of size. They were throwing babies off uh, over the bridge into the water. If they weren't thrown in the thrown in the water, they were. Uh, uh, left on the street, so the, the DVD of all these women, and you see a piece of that on the video, you see how that was found, and this preacher was tired of seeing babies in the streets, and Antonio Vivaldi was teaching these women how to, they would sing and all that, everything became the, the classical music eventually, everybody came out from being barbarians, from being uh, of the dark ages, um, people started having renaissance, age of enlightenment, and uh, musicians, uh, Vivaldi was famous for trying to help these very ugly women. They had great voices, but they were really ugly. They were behind, like, fence and all that. The people came all around to hear them. And, uh, I just throwing that in there, you know, what things turned into eventually, you know. Uh, shit, nothing's perfect to this day either now, is it? But I think I'm going to just end this right here. The random jibber-jabber. It's 20 minutes long already, but... um.